I am a frustrated neurologist. <laughs> I'm coming up to retirement. I have worked on senility, cerebrovascular disease, multi-infarct dementia, Alzheimer's disease. I won't mention the other names by which we call dementia today. Those are names that we have used in the last 35 years for the same disease. Recently, papers have come out which show that even in Hadassah, they make an error 30% of the time when diagnosing dementia. We don't know the cause of the vast number of dementias. Few are genetic, some are alcoholic, some are due to prions. We don't know anything about it. We know that our brains can compensate for a certain degree of the degeneration in the brain that causes dementia. So we have a big problem. Now I was enthused at the beginning of my career. I was one of the first to use those great washing machines that you see in hospitals. I'm sure you've all put a leg or a head into them. CT scanners, PET scanners, the ones that make a lot of noise, the MRI scanners. They allowed us for the first time to see the brain diseased, but more importantly, the normal brain. Before, we could only see the brain in life when a surgeon opened the head. So we were able to compare diseased and normal brains. And despite many advances, technical, intellectual, in our understanding, we still remain with this significant problem. So the question that I've been asking myself, and the reason I moved to Lausanne, was whether we're doing neurology the right way. We listen to people. We do all the art of neurology, but we do none of the science of neurology. We don't understand the mechanisms, so we must find new ways of diagnosing these diseases. I moved to Lausanne to be close to Henry and to be close to an institution where a president had said we will put engineering and computing with life sciences and medicine and see what happens. It shifted his EPFL from nowhere to 33rd in the world in 10 years. And it's created the Human Brain Project that I have the honor of co-directing on the medical side with Henry and with our other co-director on the computing side, Karl Heinz Meyer from Germany. What are we going to do? Around the world, there are hospitals and databases which are closed and private. We want to make them open and private. We want to Googleize all the databases of all the hospitals in the world. We want to keep them private by anonymizing all the data. And we want doctors to be able to say, where can I find people who have this set of abnormal results, be it in the blood, be it in the proteins of cerebral spinal fluid, be it on a scanner, be it on an EEG, where are they people who have this set of abnormalities? Bring those results together and look in that group which looks the same from the mechanistic biological side for the clinical features, for the targets for therapy, to be able to show to our pharmacological colleagues, look, it's this system that is malfunctioning. Find us the drugs to modulate that. Look, we need really to work on this aspect of the brain because that's where the cause is here. We do that to some extent. If we know the dementia is due to alcohol, we stop the alcohol. But here we want to go more fundamentally into a disease that is going to be like a plague with our aging population. It's going to be worse than AIDS, much worse economically, personally. Each of you undoubtedly has someone in the family who is already losing their cognition or developing some other neurodegenerative disorder. This has to be solved. We solved AIDS in 15 years because we discovered the mechanisms, we understood them, we targeted the, the, the drugs to the right places, and we now have people who don't come in and die dreadful deaths, we have people who come in and live a normal life. We must do the same with the dementias, and we will do that with the medical side of the Human Brain Project. We're putting in place servers in hospitals who wish to participate in the early phases. We're sorting out 
all the infrastructure to be able to address them, to do the calculations, to find these groups of subjects, to subdivide them on biological grounds, on grounds of knowledge about what's going on in here. We depend very much on what Henry's group will be doing, and we will test each other's notions. We depend very much on what the computer people are doing, because we will use their computers. And just by the way, they want to know what's happening here, because to keep this going, you need the caloric equivalent of two bananas a day. To keep a supercomputer going, you need a small atomic power station. They're both made of matter. There has to be a correspondence. They want to know how to build the next generation of computers and to specify it by how this computer works. So this is what we're doing in what we now call medical informatics. We've done some preliminary experiments. And on this little movie, you'll see, you'll see the red dots are people with dementia. The blue dots are apparently normal people. The black dots show different genes. The uh, green and orange and purple show different aspects of their imaging and the proteins in their blood and so on. And you can see we're already separating out different types of elderly people, perhaps some who are compensating, some who are completely normal, and others. And different types of dementia, some associated with gene abnormalities that we already know about. So we're full of enthusiasm. My depression is slowly lifting. And I hope that by retirement, I'll be fully enthused once again as a clinical neurologist. Thank you.